Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host, Sri Ayer. Today I have a guest who I could say that I'm going boldly where I have not gone before. Our guest for the day has played cricket at the test level and he has achieved a fair amount of success and uh, not just at the test level but all across ODIs. At the time he was playing, I don't think T20s were there. Uh, but after his uh, playing days, he became a coach and a very successful one at that. Without further delay, allow me to introduce you the guest of the day, Mr. W. V. Raman. Raman sir, Namaskaram and welcome to P. Guru's channel. Namaskaram, Sri. Nice to be here. How are you doing? I'm doing well, sir. And uh, first off, thank you so much for accepting my uh, invite to do a hangout. And uh, now you are in New Zealand. You are commenting on the Women's World Cup. Uh, how's the weather there? It's the summer out here. Uh, it's bright and sunny. Of course, not too hot. Mid-20s. What I would uh, dub as uh, the winter weather in Chennai. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. So, um, first off, uh, you know, I, I want to ask you about your cricketing career days. Now, you were initially a bowler and then, uh, but you became uh, much more successful as a batsman. Now, if you take a look at a contemporary player such as Ravichandra Ashwin, he was an opening batsman and then he discovered his bowling talent and now he just crossed Kapil Dev's record, uh, second highest test wicket uh, taker in India. So, how does this thing happen? Maybe you can draw some parallel so we can understand, you know, for people who are, you know, talented, but they don't know what they are really good at. Sometimes they discover this. Who discovered it for you or you, did you discover it yourself? Take it away, sir. In my case, uh, I think my physical director at school got it right because he picked me first up. He just saw me bat, uh, I think, just about three deliveries and then he picked me in the sub-junior team as a frontline batsman. What happened was the next year, uh, I would go and uh, join the staff team that used to play in one particular tournament in Chennai. It was conducted by the RKM school. They had a tournament for the uh, teaching staff every year, annual tournament. So the staff members would be practicing. So I went there, which meant that, you know, I would not get batting. So having gone there, seeing a few people play cricket, uh, I as a kid, of let's say the seventh standard, I thought I'd at least uh, help the teachers out in their preparations for their tournament and I bowled. So then my physical director who was very much a part of that squad was a good cricketer himself. So he said, why don't you even continue bowling? So as it turned out, I started doing both for my school team and uh, then I went for a selection uh, for the TNCA summer camp, uh, I think it was. They were uh, organizing a selection uh, trials for the boys of uh, under 16 or something like that. And uh, I uh, went there and I got selected as a left-arm spinner because the selectors there felt uh, I was probably the best left-arm spinner around there. So I was quite happy because, you know, I was 12 years old. I was happy to play cricket. It didn't matter to me whether people considered me as a bowler or as a batter or even as a wicket keeper. It didn't matter to me because it's just, just a case of me wanting to play cricket. Primarily because I, I, by nature, I was a restless guy. I can't be sort of uh, stuck in one place. I get bored easily. So doing some kind of activity was a great attraction for me. So as a result, it didn't matter to me at all as to what I was considered good at. Uh, uh, eventually, what happened was um, that thing continued as a main left-arm spinner who would also bat well enough. So I used to be a handy batter down the order. And uh, I got picked for the under-15 inaugural tournament in 79-80 and then gradually scaled the ladder. I even played for the state uh, team, senior team in Ranji Trophy as a frontline spinner who could bat a bit. Uh, then, uh, obviously, people recognized the fact that I could be an all-rounder. Um, uh, obviously, um, you had to really sort of keep performing every season that you play. And gradually, the progress um, kept happening and I got picked for India. Even there, the selection committee felt that I was a left-arm spinner who could bat usefully in the middle order, lower 
lower order. But um, it's all a case of circumstances and uh, the situation and also the demands of the situation, as it were. Because uh, at Rajkot, what happened was Jimmy Avanath uh, was indisposed leading up to the game on the eve of the game. And Rajkot was uh, a difficult place to get to those days because you had limited uh, sectors that the flight operators operated in which meant that they couldn't call in a replacement. Morning of the game, Ravi asked me, Hey, Oaks, uh, are you okay to bat at three? I said, I don't mind at all because if it was that opportunity to bat higher up the order, I said, I'll grab it because I can't go tell the captain of the Indian team, no, no, please send me. This is where I want to bat because that is not the norm those days. So when he gave me the opportunity, I just grabbed at it. And as things turned out, I had a good knock. Of course, helped immensely by a few drop chances. It didn't matter as far as it's concerned. It was runs on the board. And then people felt, yes, there is this uh, talent in him. So we can even look at him at the top order. But uh, leading up to that year, what happened was that I was playing um, in the leagues in UK. And what happened there was that you would play a match once a weekend. And you would not be really uh, having a good uh, net sessions right through the week, which meant that um, you are not really practicing hard enough, you are not practicing regularly enough, and you are also not practicing against good plays of spin, which meant that uh, bowling deteriorated for one, lack of practice, and two, most importantly, lack of somebody monitoring your bowling. So I didn't realize this, and uh, the harsh reality hit me um, just before I made my debut to represent the country. Uh, in the lead up to it, we played a few first class games and things were gradually going down south. And also what happened was in my effort to try and uh, get back to where I was as a bowler, I tried a few things which was absolutely wrong technically. What it did to me was that um, it uh, landed me into trouble by way of me picking up injuries because of wrong postures and you know wrong alignment in my body postures as I got into my delivery stride. That resulted in my back developing spasms frequently. Now, I know now what it was, but at that time, I didn't know myself. There's hardly anybody to point out this is exactly what is happening with you. This is where you need to try and do things differently. But the long and short of it was those days you had to work things yourself out or you got to talk to some people and then try and see what it is they thought it was. So that is my case. So now coming to the second part of it, Ashwin started off as a batsman. And uh, he also is somebody who obviously enjoyed his cricket, wanted to do something all the time. And he would have also tried his hand as a spinner. And then he would have realized yes, there's this chance that I would uh, uh, probably be considered more as a spinner than as a pure batter because batting let's not forget becomes a one ball game whereas if you are a bowler and bowling all rounder you are always in the game you'll always be you know preferred uh, to somebody else who's only capable of uh, delivering for you in one department uh, and the fact that also was that Ravi Ashwin is a clever boy he would have realized himself he had to be really good in two departments because um, in terms of the physical fitness, uh, he had his limitations. Not because of uh, him not willing to work hard to get fitter. It's just that his body structure was that. You can't really sort of uh, change your body structure. Within the time frame uh, and within the framework within which your body can allow you to work hard enough, he did that and he is continuing to do it. So obviously, it is clever of him to realize that he had to be good in two departments you know, to make uh, strides uh, in his cricketing career. And the way he bats now, uh, you can easily make out that um, he is used to playing fast bowlers. He's good uh, playing against fast bowlers, the way he bats, because he was an uh, opening batter in his younger days. Uh, this is a case of um, self-realization and self-discovery and also uh, dictated largely by the circumstances prevailing um, in a team that you are representing and also your personal form and the way things are going uh, in your cricketing career. Uh, all these factors thrown in together decide as to what you need to do 
and there are times that you need to do things which are more in the interest of a side that you are playing for than your own selfish motives. So, uh, Raman, I think you and Ashwin are more or less the same height. Am I right? Yeah. Right. So, when you were batting in that uh, that uh, iconic Test match, uh, uh, the West Indies probably may not have had a lot of you know like top class spinners, but they had fierce fast bowlers. Uh, how was your experience? Did you have? Did you hook? Were you a good hooker? I'm sorry. I when I came away to US to study during the time you were playing Test cricket, so I've never watched you on uh, on a game. I'm sure I'm going to go and pick up something, but I'm just curious because that is one thing that I noticed with uh, KL Rahul and Ashwin. Both are sort of like 5'11 and above, and and hook shot is still kind of work in progress in my opinion. But how about you? Did you have to hook a lot? The generation um, of the 70s, 80s uh, would always be good uh, in playing the horizontal bat shots, especially players from the south, because we played on the coir matting pitches. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I played. <laughs> Which that there will always be unpredictable bounce. There will always be uh, uh, unexpected deviations uh, of the surface because you'll have the knots on those mats. And then underneath the mat, it won't be sort of well prepared. You would have a lot of small stones as well. What the groundsman would do is that he can't be sort of blamed. What he would do is he would just try and sweep and level it as much as he can. But there will be a lot of stones and a little bit of gravel there uh, for that strip to hold together. On top of all these small stones and little bit pieces of uh, gravel, the mat will be rolled out and then it will be nailed. The nails sometimes will get looser as the match progresses, which means the umpire would have to call the groundsman to again ensure that the mat is nailed hard and you know it sticks there, it doesn't become loose, it's fastened well enough. So, which meant that there will be a lot of uh, unexpected bounds, unexpected deviations, and the balls that we played those days was really hard. If you got hit, and God forbid. Uh, it would have perhaps been the end of you, especially with hardly any protective gear available. Those yes, days. yes. And uh, it was expensive, even if it was available, it was going to be expensive, um, which would uh, not be seen kindly to by your parents because they were running on a tight budget those days of running a family. So if you were to go and ask for a helmet which cost about 300 rupees those days, you know, you would not be encouraged. Uh, in a very pleasant manner, in as much as within their hearts, they would have loved to do it, but uh, financial situations did not permit them to sort of readily concede to whatever you wanted. Uh, all these factors uh, ensured that um, you sort of worked a method out. The method was um, sharpening your skills, uh, braving the odds, and then prevailing uh, over the obstacles that are thrown uh, in your path. So as a result, um, Cricketers from down south will always be in a good uh, place of cut and pull. Um, you go back as far back as a GR Vishwanath or a Tiger Patodi or a Abbas Ali Beg, or you come down to Krishnamachari Srikanth, myself, or a Murli Vijay for that matter. Of course, Murli Vijay was brought up on more of uh, turf wickets when he was growing up in his cricket. Uh, but still, he was uh, good, but he ex eschewed playing those shots because. He decided on one particular game plan to help him succeed. So, to, in a nutshell, um, we were forced to uh, play those shots. Uh, we could play those shots reasonably well. Of course, I'm not putting myself on the same pedestal as a GRV or a Abbas Ali Bay or anybody else. Each of us had our own ways of countering things. Uh, but uh, the one common denominator was the players from the south who would play the horizontal bat shots as compared to the players from the West who were brought up on turf tracks who would uh, uh, tire the fast bowlers out by swaying away from short pitch stuff and then wait for the bowlers to bowl in the areas they were strong in. So their uh, cricket was all about temperament. Um, our cricket was all about trying to counter things uh, uh, with different options. You know, you, you brought me back my cricketing days. I used to study in the United States and believe it or not, I was studying in a state of Colorado, well, in the middle of the country. And we had a cricket team. And, and whatever you said, 
the players had to do it themselves you had to go get the mat you had to spread it first you had to roll it then you have to hit all the nails i mean this itself will take like 45 minutes to an hour then it might rain and if it rains then that's it you can't do anything about it oh my goodness i mean you brought back some amazing memories the only good thing was it was uh, about a mile high 6000 feet above sea level so if you hit in the air the ball will stay in the air a long time plus you could swing the ball i mean it 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 would swing quite a bit so that was good if you could you know how to put the la- seam in the right position you it did a lot of things for you so but by the way when i was at home we growing up in india my dad never liked me to go out to play cricket so every time i played cricket was by sneaking out from right underneath his nose <laughs> so you were lucky my friend <laughs> i tell you what seven out of 10 did that those days they would sneak out dressed up in a different way they would have you know, kept their whites in their friends house and then go on to change in their friends house and then reach a ground and play cricket so that was the norm then because the normal question in tamil was cricket soru poduma unge right translated in english means will cricket feed you in life that's what uh, the attitude was of the parents now uh, fast forward to now parents are desperately hoping that their uh, boys take up cricket and play ipl and it won't be long before even they have the same thoughts about their uh, girls as well because yes. ipl for uh, girls and women will start too so which means uh, the parents are going to really hope every day in their lives that their kids pick up cricket and go on to play ipl because they will be financially secure so um wonderful so let's let's take a quick look at um your career once you finished uh, with uh, playing cricket uh, by the way the worst thing for me in playing in india was the time those time the boots had these cleats on the bottom <laughs> and 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 i used to fancy myself as a pace bowler landing foot used to hurt like hell i mean by the time 4 o'clock 5 o'clock when you go home you take your boots off every toe is hurting i don't know i think shoes have improved now how was your experience so we all went through the same thing especially when you were playing on those matting tracks you would yeah. have one shoe maker uh, of uh, woods road in chennai if you remember that woods road yes 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 i know woods road yeah yeah it's just of uh, anasale you had one guy called devrajan who would uh, get a piece of leather you know it would remain as straight as a ramrod uh, right through and then uh, he would sort of bring in some rounded nails and then uh, jam them in peg them in into the leather and right. uh, he won't uh, have the tools the necessary tools to ensure now it's riveted properly so that it doesn't hurt the sole of your feet it was lucky it was more uh, a case of luck that those spikes tend to poke you through the sole of your feet and got you injured so if you're lucky enough you survived and then to try and get some protection what used to happen those days was you'd go into the moor market and buy those thick woolen army socks Yes, so there yes. Used, there used to be a mad rush in the month of April. If cricket season started in June, July, people would run in the month of April because any later you will not get that white color socks. You would only get the military green socks. Right. So which meant that you had to be early to get the white socks because if you are not seen with the white socks, you would be ticked off or you would even be you know dropped from the team. people are very very particular about certain conventions you know in that era so it was it was fun in its own way but um, those are the things you have to really uh, live up uh, with and you know contend with and get on with it so it also created a lot of um, fun you know yes, the thrill yes, of yes. the thrill of being ahead of the race uh, uh, and you know getting your shoes in time getting your white socks uh, stocked up Uh, it it is a challenge uh, that you relished you know overcoming and uh, embracing those challenges when you reflect on it now uh, it's great fun so um what made you decide that you wanted to take up coaching after you finished your playing days i think uh, subconsciously i was always uh, disappointed with the fact that um, a lot of talent was not allowed to realize its potential or did not perform up to its optimum level because of uh, lack of guidance 
I think that was really annoying at me, you know, even as I was playing cricket and even as I finished playing cricket. So perhaps that triggered me to take it upon myself to say, okay, let me do something about this. No point in saying that there's nobody to help us out or probably uh, cricketers before my generation or cricketers after my, immediately after my generation. So I said, um, probably let me try and do something uh, different here. Let me try and make a difference. If at all, it is uh, welcomed by others because there's no point you imposing yourself on others. Others also should feel the need to seek your help out and also have that respect and trust in you to sort of uh, come to you for guidance and help. So the moment uh, I retired, I went and did a level three coaching course uh, with Cricket Australia. Uh, primarily for the simple reason because it's uh, different roles and you need different skill sets. Player, yes, you would know the game, as would any ardent fan. But the, the fact of the matter is that as a coach, you'll have to be different. You'll have to know different things. Uh, uh, and you'll also have to understand the nuances of what you need to do as a coach. Because playing is different. Coaching is different. Uh, once I got into it, um, it was really satisfying. And then that's the reason I kept um, uh, coaching and continued coaching because uh, like anybody else, immediately after I uh, retired from cricket, I went into the media, I was commentating, I was also writing columns and stuff like that. But again, uh, like Rahul Dravid now, he's uh, also sort of done various things before he's zoomed in on his uh, coaching stints now and coaching career. Of course, he will get back to the media for sure later on. But uh, I can stick to what I did. Um, that's perhaps the best thing. So the thing is that uh, it gave me a lot of satisfaction and uh, I enjoyed it. There's no doubt about it.